Hey guys, this is part five. Hey guys, this is part five. And this is actually square mine. This is a whole Good morning. Welcome to the new gardens. Hey, welcome to the new gardens. And I'm going to take a tour of the back 50 acres of the park. That's an area that's in addition to your walking map. Your walking map covers about 10 acres. There's where all the animals and birds and other exhibits are. So I'll take you off that map to the back back part of the park. I'll be narrating the whole way, pointing things out as we go. Things will be on the left or driver's side or the right of the passenger side. Just need to make sure everybody does stay seated at all times because it does get bumpy. And we also need to keep our arms and legs within the tram so we don't get poked by a thorny bush or something. But with that, we'll get started. And the first thing I would like to point out is our panther exhibit over there to the right. Behind that glass enclosure, that's where Buddy resides. Buddy's a magnificent animal. He's, uh, I can see him looking at us right now. He's looking at uh, the last window to the right. He's, he's kind of looking out at us right now. He's wondering why nobody's coming over to see him. Uh, beautiful animal. Uh, part of the Puma family. You know, Puma's due to uh, cougars, mountain lions, and obviously the Florida panther. Uh, they're all big brown cats. There's no such thing actually as a black panther. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, black Panthers is a nickname for like a black leopard or a black jaguar. Uh, remember those two animals have uh, black mama. I saw it. I see it. Animal, crazy, I think you just saw it. Animals turn black, but that doesn't happen with the uh, with the pumas uh, yeah. and obviously the the Everglades uh, Florida Panther. Uh, they're all brown. Uh, beautiful animals. That's nasty. Uh, but you have to. Have to have the, uh, that is mad. I have a fun fact for the fans. Yes, it's Florida Panther is endangered. Oh, you can get, you want to get, want to get this one right here? That's a fun fact. Endangered. Anyway, uh, we got funny about four and a half years ago. That's disgusting. He's actually Look at the water. Captivity and was being raised by a, That's an good. MMA fighter, believe it or not, in Parkland. And he, he got him as a kid. Uh, but you know what? When Buddy got to be about six months old, he was already weighing like 60 to 80 pounds. And he couldn't put sit in his cage anymore. So the guy left him out in his backyard, believe it or not. He thought, he, he thought an eight-foot fence would be good enough. But you know, those things can jump 10 feet even when they're only six months old. Look at that. Look at that tree! And, uh, Look at that! Look at that! Game Commission and they, they gave him to us. We have a beautiful facility here. Right. So, uh, what do you think? What? I've, been, I've actually watched right? him grow up. I saw him go from 60 pounds all the way now. He weighs 130 pounds. Uh, this is a magnificent animal. And it's amazing how athletic these cats are. You know, most cats are super, super athletic. Uh, but just to give you an example, Buddy, can actually run 50 miles an hour for short distances. Think about how fast that is. A racehorse goes 25 miles an hour, so that means Buddy could run the Kentucky Derby in one minute, where those horses take some a whole two minutes to run the Derby. And you know what else? Is, uh, they're powerful animals, too. Uh, from a crotch, they can actually leap 10 feet high, and of course, that's how he escapes. Uh, but he can also leap 25 feet across, so they're excellent hunters. And I, in fact, Buddy hunts them there. Everybody wonders, uh, uh, what he does, but he, he catches lizards, he catches those iguanas when they come in there. Uh, every once in a while, birds will come in there and catch those. And he'll even uh, eat those bopo toads, believe it or not. I saw him do that a couple weekends ago. Hey, this walk right here, uh, about halfway up, you see that stone pedestal with a bust of James Blake, right? Like, all the way up. You guys have uh, seen it, yeah, there's an Everglades display in there from Clyde Butcher, he's a world renowned uh, photographer. Uh, excellent, excellent little exhibit in there. Now, James Floyd, right? They're the ones that are credited with finding, uh, founding Flamingo Gardens. You know, they came here, they actually bought hundreds of acres all around here. They planted uh, citrus, and they did sell, sell some of those plots with the citrus on there. They were really quite successful. They used to sell a lot of fruit out of Port Everglades. They also sold it off of this property, which they called Flamingo Groves. Now, this home you see here, I called the Ray Home, and it actually wasn't their primary residence. It was in form of their weekend retreat. But it is registered with the state now as a museum, so do check that out. Now, when Floyd was here, he did like to travel in horticulture. He planted things from all over the what world. He actually partnered with the U.S. Okay. Department of Agriculture to <laughs> grow here from around the world. Look at this big tree in the back here. Place? That's a unique yeah, tree. That's a part of the ficus family. Notice that's a family yeah. tree. 
Uh, I think it's a single tree right there, but it's got multiple chunks. You see what it does? It drops down those aerial roots. That actually is one tree. That is one tree. It has four big chunks to support the tree as it expands out. That big thing is one tree. It looks like it's just walking out where it's wider and wider. So the tree that gets taller, doesn't get taller and taller, it gets wider and wider. In fact, some people wonder how wide can it actually get. That's well, those things, you know, it's kind of hard so to kill something like that with that many trucks. They can live hundreds of years. In fact, the, uh, in India, that's trees? actually their national tree. It's a tree very similar to it. And they have single trees there that cover several acres there, and they're hundreds of years old. So it's a pretty remarkable tree. Look at this tall tree here. Look at all the fruits still up there. Do you see those? Those are avocados. When? One of the avocados are actually quite tasty. Very nutritious. Those are avocados. Those are avocados. avocado season? But you know, avocados don't ripen on the tree. Uh, you have to pick them when they get to a certain time, and then they ripen on your tree. Is, so is that one an avocado? Is that an avocado tree? Those are stored in some of the uh, softer oh things before you eat. Oh my god! Look at the peacock on the tree! Those are native stuff. Oh my god. They vary from the tree. Oh my god. Look at the peacock on the tree. Oh my god. They vary from the tree. Oh my god. There's a lot of them. Guys, we're coming across the banana tree forest. When it's ripe, and it's white, 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 fleshy fruit that's actually very sweet and delicious. Yeah, the banana. Yeah, they're a banana plantation. They have seven varieties in here. Oh, is that just, is that color? Those are called bananas that propagate. They're not in the tree family. Uh, they're actually in the herb family, but uh, see how, like, see that big stalk right there? Look at how he's got another one coming up right behind it. That's how they propagate. They don't propagate by seed. Mm. A main stalk only lives to be about three or four years before it produces yeah, fruit and, and then dies. But here's a number of trees here, a little higher ground here, that's where the hardwood trees like it. Most of these trees here are live oaks, which are native to Florida. Uh, so Floyd didn't plant those. Actually, he did plant that one, though. Check out that one with the big fruit. You see the big fruit on that tree there? That's the jackfruit tree. That's native to South India. I think that is. That's got very popular because that fruit is the largest tree-born fruit of any plant in the world, and it is edible. Uh, that's why it's got uh, kind of a malt around Jamaica, the Caribbean, a lot of tropical areas have the jackfruit very popular because it's a great food source. That fruit can actually get up to 100 pounds. Just imagine that. Now we usually harvest them here with between 20 and 80 pounds. Now you can eat them raw. Uh, if you, you let them ripen and it gets a little bit sweeter. It kind of tastes like a mild mango. Uh, but you know what the most popular way to eat jackfruit is actually cook it while it's still green before it gets sweet. Because it gets this consistency, a meat like consistency when it's cooked. And a lot of people add a little barbecue sauce to it and have like a mock pulled pork sandwich. What? Here's a neat tree on my right on the pasture side. Can you see the orange see, ponds up there, yellow ponds? Those are cacao. Cacao. C A C A. That's a little chocolate tree right there. Those ponds, they start out green, then they turn yellow, and then they turn dark orange. So those are almost ripe right now. Exactly. What we'll do is when they ripen, fully ripen. Right right We'll split them, chocolate. and you scoop out the plant, sticky seeds, yeah. and then you let them to ferment for a little while. That's a little bit of processing before you roast them. If you roast them like you would a coffee bean, people have like some coffee roasters right now. They can actually roast cocoa beans as well. They call them cocoa beans, but actually cocoa seeds. And then you grind them up, you have cocoa powder. So that's our little chocolate tree right there. So I don't know if everybody realizes that you can actually grow chocolate here in South Florida. But here we are. Notice how like went a little bit higher ground here. Now when the Everglades were here, this would have been an island. In fact, this is, uh, <laughs> Gardens was built on a part of a chain of Pine Islands, as they call them on the Everglades right here, that extended from Pine Island Road all the way west of here, past Long Key Park. And on these islands, that's where the big and some of the old ones live, the wildlife would congregate, and the hardwood trees would grow. In fact, we planted a lot of hardwoods in here, mostly exotic. We called it a little rainforest, but Irma knocked down most of them. But this tree did survive from Hawaii, the kikui tree. That's actually the native tree. That's the one on my left passing by right there, that big tree there. You may find that in the Hawaiian rainforest. Uh, the Hawaiians also like to call it the candle nut tree because the fruit it produces is loaded with an oil and you could uh, squeeze it out and use the oil to light candles. So that's the native uh, state tree of Hawaii. On our left and right here we have another exotic plant, the, the Brazilian red club with the red, red flowers here. And this is, I've seen these in hedges throughout Florida as well. 
But we do have some native trees here as well. On my right, there's two trees with kind of like a smooth or reddish and peeling bark there. Those are gumbo limbos. And you'll see gumbo limbos all throughout Broward County. But typically on usually higher ground that may have been islands of the Everglades, but we now refer to them as hammocks. You'll hear that term hardwood hammocks. And that's because with the Everglades drained, it doesn't make sense to keep calling these islands. Uh, Acres. That's, that's better than watching the softball game. Mm-hmm. There's a pond. There's a turtle. There's a turtle. Go jogging there. By the way, guys, on our next adventure, I'm going to bring a flamingo. And I'm going to get from the gift shop. Look at this. Okay, let this come in. Say he she. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I, I, oh, you know, I have to buy him that turned down. Anyway, that's loosey goosey there. That, I don't want to be too loud either. Okay, is that better? Goosey. Mother Goose? Anyway, that's Mother Goose. She's a Chinese goose that was donated to us. And, uh, but now I have another, uh, another hammock here. There's a different about this one. The other one had a lot of exotic plants on it. This one has all uh, native plants. And that's at the request of Jane Ray. You know, Ford was going around planting all these exotic things from all over the world. She wanted to preserve one. My so this is the one she chose, this hammock here. So then we can post, this, we can post this, this video. Uh, if you look around, this is what native Florida may have looked like when they arrived, and, and maybe even oh, hundreds of years before that. We could so also hopefully they can preserve this going forward. So this is native Florida as it may have looked many, many years like ago. send it to other people. But now we're going to leave the hammock down, or leave the high ground. Yeah, I can have some of my friends. Because we're going to the low ground area. Yeah, I can stab it. We're saving swamp lands, the wetlands. So I have a complete but the only thing that's used to train the East of Highway 27 to make place for housing and agriculture. Uh, this water you see here is actually a man-made pond. Mm. You know that most of the lakes and ponds in South Florida are man-made? Kind of out of necessity because with the Everglades drained, we needed a way to retain water to help replenish our aquifer because the aquifer lies beneath many layers of limestone. Mm. This is where the leaves uh, are. It's also known as a mitigation pond. Like uh, it does mitigate, it's help really mitigate floods. Water, water can flow into there from heavy rains. And also mm -hmm. helps support mm -hmm. wildlife. You know, wildlife needs a source of water. Uh, it's loaded with fish, even though it's man-made. It's loaded with fish and turtles. And that attracts fishing birds, like in pingas and cormorants and herrings. And then you also have the wading birds, like the ducks and the geese. Here's, a, here's a, some of those turtles I was mentioning. Uh, they like to the sun themselves. See, they got a little, if they stay in the water too long, they get a little moss growing on their back there. Uh, so they got to get out and try to dry it out and kill that moss and keep their shell nice and shiny and hard. A lot of these birds are taking a little snooze here. Now you can see there's some trees along there. What's the, what's the part of the trees like, the, like being on the hammocks? Uh, but these are trees that adapted to the lowland area. Uh, these trees with the big leaves here are that called pond apples because they produce a produce of fruit that looks a lot like an apple, but it's not really yeah, yeah. edible for humans. Uh, but it is nutritious and supports the wildlife. Then you see the cypress too is another tree you see is along here. Now there's some native ducks there. See those brown birds right there? Those are uh, native yeah. birds. You know the Muscovy duck, the black and white one here is not native. That's actually, oh that's a great one. I've never seen that duck before. I wonder what kind of duck that is. <laughs> anyway, the, the, uh, the these blind birds here, Egyptian geese, they're not native. The Muscovy ducks are native of Mexico, they, they, and the interesting thing about them is they don't quack. Uh, the native That's bird, weird. Uh, the native ducks do quack. And there's a big white heron in the trees there, they like to 